this is less of a talk than it is an apology. I write last week in AWS and I host the Screaming in the Cloud podcast and I inadvertently have spent the last three years misleading you all. I've been a staunch advocate for cloud. I now know that this was wrong and I wish to apologize unreservedly. It doesn't matter which vendor, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle, it's all the same. It is expensive and you deal with lock-in. It's not acceptable. So instead, I'm going to handle it differently. What you may not be aware of is I have a side project called Twitter for Pets. It's the leading social network for pets. It's like regular Twitter, only 80 times less racist. <laughs> They're good dogs. And we are not going to do it on cloud. We're going to build our own data center. We hop in the Twitter for Pets corporate jet with the pets, and we fly to a different city. We don't put our data center in the same city because of DR concerns and real estate in San Francisco is expensive. We're based there because that's where the good developers live. <laughs> our first data center we tour is a super nice security guard. He lets us in and doesn't need to see our ID. That's an instant fail because we have auditors. We manage both medical and financial data for the pets. It's a hard fail. The second data center, we look at our one line diagram. It's an, our, it's an electrical graph of everything in the system. They show four transformers. We walk through two pads, two transformers. It's aspirational. It's a joke. It's a one-liner diagram. We visit the third data center. Things seem mostly fine. We shake hands. We sign a three-year contract. Everything gets done. We can start moving in in only four short months. We start buying servers from Dell. It turns out that when we wind up placing orders, we have to schedule it carefully. If it goes too soon, we pay extra storage charges. If they don't know it's coming, they wind up uh, leaving them out in the rain. Because, of this, because Dell screws it up, we get both. They leave it in the rain and charge us for it. We smile, we sigh, life goes on. We unpack some boxes, there's no fiber. We don't need a GBIC, Cisco screwed it up. They sent us the fiber version instead of the copper version. We open a support case, it only takes four short hours. We then wind up building out our data center cage. We check it end to end. It contains no children. This is apparently a, com a hard thing to do. This does render us ineligible for some government contracts, but that's okay. Unlike many tech companies we will not name, Twitter for Pets has standards. It turns out we were wrong. There is, in fact, fiber there. Okay, we're going to need that GBIC. That's a bit of a problem. Fortunately, that product case is still pending. We can swap it out. It's annoying. Life goes on. These are rack nuts. This is why everyone bleeds while building data centers. They tear your hands to hell. Your eyes do not deceive you. There are four different sizes. No, they are not compatible. Yes, we buy four different kinds because whatever we get, we know we're going to be wrong. We rack a bunch of servers. 11 are perfect, the 12th does not. We begin diagnosing. Because we are adults and professionals, it only takes us four short hours to figure out the problem. The problem, as it turns out, is a failed cable. This happens from time to time. We always have a cable tester for that exact reason. We also bring in the world's best firewall. We cut the cable when we throw it away. Why do we cut the cable before putting it in the trash? Terrific question. I'd like to introduce you to someone. His name is Dewey. Dewey has a job. That job is called remote hands. He works for the data center and charges 75 bucks an hour to do simple tasks. For 125, there's a smart hands option, which really says insulting things about Dewey. But he's a trooper. He lets it slide. Two o'clock in the morning in the hotel, we get a phone call. That's right, Nagios. It's the original call of duty. We rush back to the data center. What happened? Well, it's pretty obvious once we get there. We go back and take a look at the networking side of things. Remember that fiber? Yeah, it's loose for a reason. It turns out that one of the remote hands people decided to tighten it for us so it wouldn't get caught on anything. Tighten fiber, it breaks. It breaks, it doesn't pass light. TCP now terminates on the floor. It's a problem. <laughs> we believe strongly in the, in the culture of a blameless post-mortem. We conduct a root cause analysis and blamelessly determine the root cause is Dewey. <laughs> We talk about hiring potentially smarter hands. Budget makes that a bit of a non-starter. We finally get back on the plane and fly back to begin work on our application. And that plane is the only part of that story did, that did not happen at a data center build out for one company. This is not worst case, this is typical case. But we own our own destiny. We are able to build out our own stuff without lock-in and now we can begin writing our code as soon as we finish installing Kubernetes, which is a short thing to do. 
When you don't get what you want, you get character. My name's Corey Quinn. I'm a character.